Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Let me just wish everyone here a very happy Easter. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've just gotten out of what I consider to be a hostage situation, right? Uh, Easter brunch with family. <laughs> what, better, what better way? What better way to loosen my collar a bit <clears throat> and to uh, enjoy some freedom than by making a boxing video? Let's talk about Ricky Burns' loss to Julius and Dongo. Now, first, let me say, don't believe the referee. Don't believe press reports, right? Which are often written by very well-intended people who accept the official version of events. What I want you to do, and the video is online. In fact, as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to put it in my favorites, right? The video is here online. What I want you to do is to go to the end of the 11th round. Right? Let's trust our own two eyes. Right? What I want you to do is to look at the end of the 11th round. You're going to see Ricky Burns get hit on the side of the head. Right? He gets hit on the side of the head. Folks, few things in life will upset your balance more than getting hit on the side of the head. And you're going to see that he goes down. Right? He goes down. Now, my point to you is simply, if he wouldn't have gone down without the punch, why isn't that a knockdown? Right? I know it's at the 11th, the end of the 11th round. I know by that point, Ndongo has the fight in hand. But the rules don't change simply because a fighter has the fight in hand. Right? They don't. Whether it's the first round or the 11th round or the end of the 11th round, a knockdown's a knockdown. Let me challenge YouTube Nation. Watch that portion of the fight. It's literally the closing seconds of the 11th round and tell me why that's not a knockdown. Well, let's get to the 12th round. Now, I'm not talking about what happens with about two and a half minutes to go in the round. But somebody tell me what happens with about 1 minute and 43 seconds left in the 12th round. Right? Forget what the referee's doing. Right? We're boxing fans who've seen fights. We're paying attention. Right? The ref has his opinion. We have our opinion. Ricky Burns leaps in. And it's important. Because Burns has a rough time getting close to this guy the whole day. So Ricky Burns is desperate. He's about to lose his share of the title. He leaps in. And Ndongo, right hand, hits him again on the side of the head, folks. Ricky Burns goes down. I'm supposed to believe this is not a knockdown? Folks, <laughs> from where I sit, in the 11th and 12th rounds of this fight, Ricky Burns hits the canvas, right? I'll agree. The knockdowns are really more of a um, balance, hit at the wrong time type thing. But they really capture the problem Burns has in this fight. When he leaps in to try to get close, he's getting hit upside the head, isn't he? And it's the kind of thing where his balance is so tenuous because he has to overextend himself so much to get close against an opponent who's a bit of a matador, right? A guy who has the presence of mind, who should be rewarded for having the presence of mind, of being able to get off right hands, right? He's fighting southpaw. He's able to get off right hands when Ricky Burns jumps in. Now, let me say this. This is one of the more impressive performances that I've seen this year, right? Julius Ndongo isn't a young guy. 
I know he's just burst on the world stage. He's actually 34 years old. Now, if you go to boxing, uh, excuse me, boxrec.com, you're going to see that Ricky Burns is supposed to be 5'10", and Ndongo is supposed to be 5'10 and a half. What ruler did they use to measure these guys? Ndongo looks a lot bigger to me. There isn't a half inch difference between these guys, right? Look, and, and, and Dongo looks a lot bigger. Now, maybe it's because Ndongo is a master at using length, right? He comes in, he's a southpaw. He only gives you a side profile, right? You're not going to hit him in the chest because his chest is off at the side. He's shooting a jab. He's tall as it is. He's the kind of guy who hits you in the body, not by squaring up and then trying to lower a shoulder. No, he hits you in the body from the side profile. He's able to throw left hands straight right across his body to hit you in your body. You have a hard time getting past the jab. Right, it's a right jab since he's a southpaw. He mixes in a very long, very long right hook. Right, so you're getting hit with the jab and suddenly here's a power shot hitting you on the side of the head. Then you say enough of this, you duck down to parry the jab and he's hitting you in the body with his dominant hand while still staying far away from you. And Dongo's unbeaten, he's thought it out. Because of his height, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to spend several rounds just trying to get in the area code of this guy. Right? He's very hard to hit in the body. Because again, he's at a side profile, and guess what? He has a vertical game. You start getting too close to him, he can bend at the knees. Right? Ricky Burns backs up against him. That's a mistake, folks. Because a guy who can deal in the world of length, think Hitman Hearns against Roberto Duran, right? If you're outside against him, that's what the guy wants. Because the guy doesn't want you to be close to him. That's why he has a length construct. He wants you outside. And Dongo is happiest when Ricky Burns is outside moving around the ring and Burns covers a lot of ground. Burns moves very well. Right, he does. The problem is he's moving exactly where Ndongo wants him to. Right, and Dongo knows Burns can't get close to him, especially not when he's backing away, given what I believe, just looking at the fight, is a sizable size advantage that Ndongo has, right? Again, I'm not going to believe BoxRec.com's numbers. I'm going to believe my own two eyes. People, there's a sizable size difference between these two fighters. So, you have Ndongo who's mobile. He not only knows how to use length, but when you're moving away from him, guess what, folks? He's moving with you. This guy is not a potted plant. Great footwork. As you're moving, you're going to notice his side profile never deviates. Right? He doesn't try to come after you by turning and then running towards you, opening himself up. No. He's moving in a side profile the whole fight. Then, of course, when Ricky Burns gets bold, especially late in the fight, and tries to bum rush in. He's getting hit on the side of the head. Quite frankly, I thought he's getting dropped from shots on the side of the head that they didn't register. Now keep in mind, it's academic. Right? Because all of the judges, all of the judges gave Ndongo the win by wide margins. Right? All of them. But let's face it. Boxing has a lot to do with impression and marketing. Right? We'd be even more excited about Ndongo if we knew 
that Ndongo knocks Ricky Burns down in the 11th and the 12th rounds. Also, understand, this Ndongo guy was on the 2008 Namibian Olympic team. Right? He's been fighting world-class opponents, right? As an amateur, he's fighting Olympic-level opponents for years. Think about, I know he spent most of his career in Namibia, but understand, he gets the title by traveling to Russia. Then he pivots, travels to Scotland to fight Ricky Burns there. He's fighting guys in their own backyard. He also has the mental toughness that comes from being 34, right? Maybe the world has just started noticing him, right? He wasn't an Olympic medalist, right? He's in the Olympics, didn't win the Olympics. Let's just say maybe the world is just noticing him now. But understand, this guy never falls apart, never falls apart. The entire fight against Ricky Burns. He starts strong. He ends strong. In my opinion, he ends stronger than even the ref gives him credit for, right? Because the ref seems to miss two knockdowns, which would have been, in my opinion, two 10-8 rounds. So, what can an opponent do to deal with this guy? Right? He fights in Terrence Crawford's division. Right? By the way, that's the way we need to think of the division. When you have a dominant champion, folks, it's his division. Right? So, as far as I'm concerned, it's Gennady Golovkin's middleweight division. Right? Well, it's Terrence Crawford's junior welterweight division. Right? That's, that's what the division is. Well, how do you deal with this guy? And keep in mind, Ndongo now is a unified champion. He doesn't have all the belts, but he has more than one belt at Junior Welter. How do you deal with him? Well, you have to find a way to get by his jab, don't you? You have to. Now, he's a southpaw, which makes it tough on orthodox fighters. But Terrence Crawford, of course, is ambidextrous, right? Crawford can come in as a southpaw, mess up the angles a little bit. Another thing that needs to be done is you have to find a way, have to, to get inside. You have to. You can't be fighting a tall guy who's hard to reach, who has a jab from the outside. Folks, that's a recipe for disaster. I was looking at Ricky Burns' strategy, and I was, I was wondering who gave him this game plan. It, let's just say it didn't seem that thought out. You're watching the early part of the fight. You're saying, that's another round for a taco. And then you're thinking, wait a moment. You know, Ricky's giving away too many rounds here. You can't fight that fight. You've got to get inside earlier than Ricky Burns. How about getting inside by the third round? Is that too much to ask? Well, what I believe someone's going to have to do is either, one, have incredible ring coverage. Keep in mind, Ndongo uses length. He's fighting long. He's far away from you. You're going to have to find a way after he throws a jab to make that jab miss and then leap in from way outside with shots. Right now, other than a Deontay Wilder and a David Hay, I'm not sure who has the capability in boxing to wing shots from that far out. Golovkin does, right? Golovkin. But let's just say the number of guys who can wing shots, who have the kind of ring coverage to overcome this guy's length, Right? It's few and far between. Right? Few and far between. So I believe what a fighter needs to do is they're going to have to do this Mike Tyson, Joe Fraser style. They're going to have to bob and weave their way in. In other words, the guy is throwing a jab, you bob under the jab, then you run inside. 
right? You need a guy who can literally just move inside, might not be able to throw punches while he's moving inside, right? Because as I said, this Ndongo guy stalled out. He has a nice straight left hand that comes right down Main Street. He alters it. He can throw it wide too, but he throws it right down Main Street to hit you to the body. Those straight lefts to the body destabilize Ricky Burns. So as you're coming inside and you dodge the jab, you have to be ready for the straight left to the body. And as it hits your body, or as it hits your arms as you come inside, you really have to continue to come inside. You cannot allow a guy who knows how to use length to reestablish that length. And as I said, Ndongo moves extremely well. This guy has great legs. He's able to quickly pivot and back up. As I said, he's like a matador. Ricky Burns gets inside, he backs up, he has the right hand ready, and he's a southpaw, right? So, let's just say, Terrence Crawford's division at 140 has just gotten a hell of a lot more interesting. Let me also say, too, this Ndongo guy, his body looks to me to be the kind of body that could actually carry extra weight. So one wonders what would happen if he were to fight some of the guys at 147 pounds. In other words, this guy just dominated, just dominated Ricky Burns thoroughly, in my opinion, right? He has a very difficult style and he's very thought out. This is not a guy who's winging it. This is a 34-year-old with a game plan who has developed a style that keeps you on the outside of him, that makes it hard for you to hit his chest because the guy is always at a side profile and he can move and keep that side profile going, right? If you jump outside, he can widen that left hand. The few highlights of him online show him decimating opponents with wide left hooks. Against Ricky Burns, he unveils a straight left to the body, right? Keep in mind, it's interesting because, again, if it were a left hook to the body, he'd have to be closer to Ricky Burns than he wants to be. So he makes sure it's a straight left, right? So this guy is planned. He's good. He's unbeaten, right? 50% KO ratio, understand the guy is more than a puncher, right? Wins the title by first round knockout, but actually wins by decision 50% of the time like he did here, right? You need to keep an eye on this guy. He's not a flash in the pan, it looks to me. Like, this guy might even be a force at 147, right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.